Okay, hello everyone. Um, hope you're all doing well. Uh, I'm sure people are beginning to turn up. Uh, we're about a minute early right now. Um, welcome to this SFP London Student Chapter uh, talk um, by Professor Yushi Nakamura. Um, he's, uh, we're very uh, honoured to have him today uh, talking for us. He will be uh, talking, as you can see, he's, he's had a very varied career. He's worked on a lot of different topics, but today uh, he'll be talking about his work on fundamental fire research uh, in reduced gravity or space fires for <laughs> simpler people. But before we uh, go on, we'll be waiting a few minutes. So I thought uh, we should in advertise some of the other talks we've got coming up, some of the other stuff um, that site is working on. First of all, if there are, oh, if there are any other students among among us or any recent graduates, um, we highly recommend uh, submitting a video for our Flashpoints competition. Uh, basically, you just do a three minute video explaining your research, maybe not even your research, just explaining a little bit of fire, a little bit of a literature review or something like that um, in three minutes and making it as entertaining as possible. Um, and the, if you make it really good, the winner of this competition can win £350. There's only a few days left, but um, I, I made a video in one day. So it's, it's still well within the deadline uh, if you're interested. And I highly recommend giving it a go. Um, also, uh, next month, uh, we've got a talk coming from uh, Dr. Antonio Cicione. Um, he, uh, that's on, the 19th of October, same time, uh, but he'll be talking about fires in informal settlements. Uh, and it's looking to be really, really interesting. So if you're around on that day, uh, I recommend you coming along for that. Um, a little bit of housekeeping before we start as well. Um, I know you can all talk to me through the question and answer session. Uh, me and Yushi can see your questions. Um, I'll try and uh, publish them as they come up so that uh, you can see what people are asking and maybe you, if you see someone else has already asked a question, you don't need to ask it again, but we won't be dealing with any of those questions until the end. So don't worry, we can see you've posted them and we'll try and get to as many as possible by the end of the presentation. So without further ado, uh, welcome again, uh, Professor Nakamura for a fantastic talk on space fires. Uh, over to you, Professor. Thank you. Can you see it? Yep, that looks good. OK, so uh, shall I start? Yes, please, please do. Very thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind introduction and uh, good to morning, everybody. But a good evening in Japan, right? But anyway, uh, it's pretty much honor me to uh, bring me to here. I really appreciate it for your kindness. And my name is Yuji uh, from uh, Toyohashi Utec from Japan. Uh, today's my talk is pretty much different to what you have probably, but I'm, I'm talking about the uh, uh, pretty much fundamental work uh, entitled the strategy to fundamental fire research in reduced gravity, which is space fire. So let me start uh, my talk. You know, uh, the space fire research is very much in the applied. Uh, once you have the fire in the space, uh, you know, clue is exposing the immediate danger. So of course they're protecting or uh, established fire, strategy, fire safety strategy in space is a very important task. But more importantly, a space fire research actually opened the fire science, which is uh, you can simplify the system and uh, to study the fundamental load of the transport processes on the solid combustion, for example, because in the actual fire is too complex, just like uh, you, know, you always uh, find that. Always three dimensional and time dependent and uh, even fire goes you don't know how the fire quickly goes spreading out. So uh, uh, to make it very much fundamental or scientific, you have to be very much simplified. But using a microgravity, which is a space fire, 
can actually be possible to, to do that. That's the one of the very good merit. The merit of the microgravity test that's believed is just like that. As mentioned, simplify with the ideal conditions. So generally three dimensional time dependent can be reducing to maybe less dimensional, like a two dimension or one dimension. And the probably most likely the under steady state assumption can be validated. So key point one, two, uh, first is high order of the symmetry, just like a droplet combustion uh, picture it over there, allowing to uh, us to work with a lower dimension. But this is very excellent uh, features in the theoretical work. The key point two is possibly touched with masked process by the buoyancy inducing flow. Because the general fire is three dimensional and the buoyancy inducing flow is too much. So you can actually you cannot actually control. But once you go to microgravity, because you don't have any kind of buoyancy inducing flow, so you can control the flow in a very precise manner. So the flow effect, fundamental flow effect, or transport effect can be, uh, you know, systematically you can study. So those are the merit of the microgravity test. When it don't have any kind of buoyancy, a diffusion is dominant pro transport processes and the flow effect can be carefully studied. So those are the very good merit. This is the one of the example uh, which was done at the NIST uh, when I was in there. Uh, this is a Takashi, uh, who was a PI of NASA's Space Shuttle project uh, in the fire research in uh, its 1990s. This left figure is actual figure uh, taken by the uh, Space Shuttle experiment. It was a cellulosic paper, and this alone is actually showing the flow direction. It's very weak flow. Once ignited, flame generated, and the flame is actually moved against the flow. As you can see that the flame shape is totally different from what you actually see in normal gravity environment. Because you have no microgravity, you don't have any kind of buoyancy. So flame is, looks like very different, unfamiliar behavior. But this is a spot ignition. Then flame is just gradually increase the size. Uh, that's too difficult. So uh, let the further, uh, not spot ignition, but the line ignition, entire edge was burned first. Then uh, applying the flow, then how the flame spread. That is actually taken the figure. This is a side of you. Ignited over here, the paper was burned, and this is a the flow. Then Perfect, well, nearly very good uh, two dimensional flame is actually formed. And this flame is moving uh, against the flow uh, direction. Because this is a two dimensional, again, you know, the merit of the, using microgravity is to make the less dimension. You can apply two dimensional simulation, then this is the, actually the results. Once the flow comes out, uh, because the uh, uh, flame uh, need the oxygen, if we have the buoyancy flow, oxygen is automatically calm due to by the buoyancy inducing flow. But without the presence of the buoyancy, the gravity, uh, there is no buoyancy flow. So only this weak flow can supply the flame, the oxygen to the flame. But well, that's the reason why the leading edge ahead, uh, in front of the leading edge, is intensified due to by uh, excess uh, oxygen can be transported, but the other edge is actually going to die because we don't have any uh, sufficient oxygen supply over there. Most of the oxygen was consumed at the front edge and the leading edge does not have any flame column. But well, that's the reason why flame propagates opposing to the flow. So such kind of fundamental ideas or the phenomena or processes, we can actually get it. But well, that's like very good. But of course, there is a demerit too. Uh, there is several way to have the microgravity environment. The one is parabolic flight. Maybe you know that. And also the other one is a drop tower shaft. Some leak was dropped into the uh, uh, some length. And during the drop, 
uh, you have the micrograph. Of course, the, uh, those experimental facilities, uh, only limited test time is, is available. So that is kind of like one of the demerit. So everybody wants to have the longer microgravity time. Well, that's the reason why they prefer to go to the space experiment like this. But that's too expensive. For me, I'm not afford it. Maybe Giramu does, but I'm not. So uh, uh, only very limited person can do that. So these are most likely people saying that the merit of the microgravity test. Test time is long, short. If you got it longer, it's expensive. But there is one very huge demerit, which is not much known or not much people saying. That's the limited volume for the testing. Because your chamber or your test device has to be installed over here. So the test device must be pretty small. Let me uh, introduce one example. This was the uh, LIGSI project, uh, which done by a uh, space shuttle experiment by NASA. Again, this, seed, uh, this uh, white part is the cellulosic, cellulosic seat, and the center spot definition was applied, and there was slow wind, which is a 2.0 centimeter per second. It's applied. The flame is generated, and the flame moves against the, fl uh, against the flow, which I, as I mentioned before. The char front is actually clearly formed over that. It looks like this flame is very big, but you can see that one grid is only one centimeter. Actually, this little hardware, the outfit is just like that. The dimension is, this is the millimeter, the unit, one through one, 85, 95. So you can imagine that this is a very small box, and it's a duct for uh, con configuration, of course. You have the wall, and there is a seat. They ignite it over here. But as time goes by, flame is going to grow. Then, of course, flame approaching to the wall or seating because this is the duct for the configuration. So it's very easy to imagine that about, okay, the test bottom is very small. What most make the severe is the flame may interfere of your wall or the seating, which is that the configuration. Now, once flame is strongly interfered, uh, burning behavior also depending on the size of your box. When your chamber is pretty smaller or bigger, if the result is different, then scientific value is not good because scientific value only, you know, uh, value it if you have the very general ideas. So if you, if your result is totally depending on your test facility, uh, that's not good. So NASA was also wondering about that. It's uh, too small, maybe. That they want to check, but they can't check by the experiment. Again, the experiment has a very severe volume limitation. What I must do in my simulation. Then I did. When I was in the, at the NIST, uh, NASA was asking to the Takashi uh, to check up the uh, effect of the wall or effect of the uh, duct uh, configuration. So one uh, case I simulated, totally open, far field condition, no chamber, totally open. This is three-dimensional, non time dependent. The other one is a duct-like configuration like this and see how the flame moves numerically. And this is the result. Then this is a quiz, okay? Uh, there is two simulation results, which is a top view, only the half portion was cut it. And the color part is the flame, and the red allow is uh, flow. The obviously two results is, looks a bit different. The one is, Severe confined, which is a duct configuration. The other one is far field, totally open. Can you imagine which one is which? The answer is 
I, I believe you already have the answer. The answer is like this. The confined case is flame is much bigger. The far field, which is open case, flame gets smaller. When I saw this result first on my screen, I doubt it because I was expected the flame getting uh, bigger, then flame interfere to your wall, and the, flame, the heat might be you know, diffused to the wall. So the flame cannot be wider if you have the duct configuration. That was my expectation, but the result is totally opposite. The reason was how to uh, you know interpret this one is of course I can do that because I have the numerical results. The reason the why the confined case, which is duct for, uh, configuration case, flame get bigger is because the flame between the flame and the wall, the flow path is getting narrower. If you have an open flow, it's easy to diverge, but if you have a confined, which has a wall. Your, your flow has to be passing through this gap. So it's accelerated. Through this acceleration flow, more oxygen can transport. Then oxygen can actually supply the flow, uh, the backside of your flow, flame. So this edge is more intensified because you have a leach of the oxidizer. That's the reason why flame can be bigger. So this is the actual interpretation. This is the chair front uh, tracking on the duct configuration and also the open configuration. And as time goes by, duct configuration is pretty much in a bigger flame can be observed. Then you can see that the result is strongly depends on the environment, which is the boundary condition. But that's not good in a case of a spot image just like that so now i wonder the another merit was this dimension so if you have the line ignition the flame has to be two dimensional from the side of you if that's really right or not under the condition of limited volume case i did a numerical simulation as well line ignition case, for example, this is a line ignited, and this is the weak flow comes from over that, then this is the flame. The same reason the flame wing is more intensified. As time goes by, the initially that nearly flat, but as time goes by, this wing bulge is strongly eluded. So pretty far away from the two dimensional. And also, this is non-steady state phenomenon. So it's not really simplified. It's not a two-dimensional. Dimensional. So unfortunately, the dimensional effect is still pronounced in microgravity. The reason is, again, you have the, lit the volume limited. If you don't have any kind of volume limitation, of course, you can hold the, the microgravity the, the merit of the microgravity, which is the less dimension, highly symmetrically, or something like that. But the, due to by the volume limited effect, the limitation, those issues always come up. I learned from the microgravity researches which I have experienced, the effect of limited volume is extremely severe. However, we have to accept because there is no other, no other choice. Even though you're very rich, like a Giramo, they pay a lot. But, you know, severe volume effect cannot be avoided. Then eventually non-steady, three-dimensional feature and naturally comes up. And maybe microgravity is not always in ideal conditions. Of course, if, if you have a select, the best condition maybe the things might be different. But anyway, of course, how we can study, this is the kind of question that we have to always think about, how we can study space flight without having such limitations. Of course, again, the microgravity feature is very good. Naturally, you can reduce the dimension, you have the very highly uh, symmetry, so you can 
go deep in the science. But due to by the limitation, which I have talked about, the merit cannot be used so much. So we have to have some kind of the uh, other way, the answer, in order to hold the merit of the microgravity work, but I try to waive uh, body limitation case, we should have alternative methodology to mimic the microgravity. Then try to avoid that kind of limitation. How? Because I don't have so much rich, uh, I, I'm not so much rich like a Guillermo, so I have to use a microgravity. One answer is using a scale modeling concept. <clears throat> so what am I going to do is try to simulate what reproducing the same phenomena which we observe in the microgravity under the normal gravity by using the, the scale modeling concept. How to mimic. <clears throat> start, before starting on that, we let, let slightly uh, I explained about what is scale model and this is what the scale model is. These are the real one, which is what we call the prototype, and this is the model, which is the scale model. The scale factor is all 1 over 12, so this is the smaller one. That looks the same. Now that is what we call the, small, the scale model. This is the model by scale. <coughs> it looks similar, that actually the same shape. This is what we call the static similarity we hope. The other one, the scale modeling, is this is an ING case. In that case, a dynamic similarity may hold. So what means the dynamic similarity is the same motion. Because this doesn't have any kind of motion. But if you have the motion, a dynamic similarity must also hold. Then your behavior looks the same. So what we want to do right now is how to uh, hold the dynamic similarity of this one. This is the additional one, how to, what it is explaining about the static or dynamic similarities. The static similarity is a shape that looks the same. The how to characterize the shape is the length. So taking that length with you, A, A dash, B, B dash, C, C dash, and then those with you is constant. That's the actual scale law, what we call. This is actually the same as the scale factor for the static similarity. In case of the dynamic similarity, because the motion is a similar, what determines the motion is, for example, the force. This guy, force FA and FB was actually uh, subjected over that. And this guy, FA dash, F dash, is actually close to this object. But the similar uh, uh, definition of the static similarity may be done for the dynamic similarity. The characterizing uh, for this motion is the force. So taking a force ratio, just like a length ratio of the uh, static similarity, <coughs> like a FA, FA dash, FV, FV dash. Taking this ratio is constant. That is what we call the scaling. This is what we also know the pi number, like a non-dimensional number. <clears throat> so here's the dynamic similarity is a key to mimic the target dynamics process, which is what we call the scale model. Once we have the dynamic similarities hold the same type of the common vortex in a very different scale can be observed in nature. Here, also that. This is the Mount Fuji. And this is the scale model experiment. This is how the water, and then this is the fire wall. In the, in the forest fire, and then this is the same structure in laboratory test. So let me back to the uh, original question. How to simulate this space fire? To have the dynamic similarity, the base of the motion should be concerned. What is the uh, uh, es essence of the motion is the what kind of force subjecting this flame. I can pick the several forces, something like this, 
in this view graph, this is the model, because you have the very weak flow here. So you must have the inertia, inertia force due to by incoming flow. But because you can't achieve the zero gravity, so there must be very my, very small microgravity. So small buoyancy might be here, like this. <clears throat> and also flow is on the surface, must be bound the layer flow should be formed. So there must be viscous force. So there is three forces which is the inertia, buoyancy, viscous forces. And these three are equally small. And this is the force subjecting to the microgravity flow effect. Then what how to find the scaling law because we have three forces like this inertia, viscous buoyancy. The scaling law is taking the uh, uh, force uh, lithium, what is it called, pi numbers. Taking a lithium of three forces, eventually we can have the two pi numbers independently. Take these two, which is the uh, inertia versus viscous force. This is exactly the same as the Reynolds number. The Reynolds number was actually written by like this. And the low, which is the density, is a linearly correlated to the pressure P. And the L is a scale length. The length of scale is actually over here. The another pi number is, well, uh, anything will be okay. So the viscous force versus the buoyancy force. This is what we call the graph of number. The graph of number is written by like this. Then again, uh, some important factor is scale like this. L cubic, which is the length scale over here, and rho square is converting the P square here, and a gravity G. Now, the target phenomena which we want to mimic is a microgravity phenomenon and also the weak flow. So in the case, the Reynolds number is small and the graphs of number is also small. So that's the target. Yes, of course, naturally, if you have the low gravity here, graphs of number has to be very small. If you have a flow velocity u is very small, the Reynolds number can be small. And my target is without using the microgravity, how to mimic, which is the, if you this G is imposing to the normal gravity, how to make this number, which is graph number, getting small? The answer is size is smaller or the pressure is lower. Then even G is unity, these part getting very small. The results of uh, the graph of number is very small. So if this pi number actually governing the, uh, the, the system, it should simulate the microgravity phenomenon. My assumption, by using a thin wire proportion, this, this is the wire and the thin polymer coated, then you it in the small chamber, which is the uh, your pressure can be controlled. A reduction of the pressure to, until to the uh, one fifth of the uh, normal pressure condition, which is the 100 kil, uh, kilopascal. The reason using the uh, thin wire is not much very uh, reason uh, because the, the burning thing is very small, so you can actually have a smaller flame. Small. The result is yes, once you're reducing the pressure 100. To 30 kilopascal, flame shape is approaching to more likely spherical. So it looks like a, you don't have any points, but you actually hardly see the points effect here. It looks like the same. It looks like a microgravity. It's not actually enough. So let me uh, check the another one, another step. The PMM sphere is inside, then ignited. In a microgravity test uh, picture over here, it's done by mist. The flame is spherical, and uh, your PMM, PMMA also spherical, but they're getting shrinking. 
all over the detail of which is yeah, similar to the droplet combustion. We also simulate those kind of things in low pressure chamber under, under normal, normal gravity in my lab. I'll try to similar, similarly observe like this. And uh, because I missed the paper saying how much the burning rate, so we try to check that kind of quantitative agreement uh, can be observed or not by using low pressure approach. This is actually this is the flame is blue flame is very much oops. Yes, you by image analysis, you can trace the D2 low like this. D is the diameter of the polymer versus time. D square versus time, the linearity uh, goes down. So this gradient is minus K. This K is what we call the burning rate. The microgravity test, which is done by the NIST, the value of the K is like this, and that these two oxygen conditions. If we've had a 100 kilopascal, which is normal pressure condition like this, the burning rate is very far from what we see in the microgravity. The reduction of the pressure until to uh, achieve the near the spherical condition, which is a 20 kilopascal, the number of the K is very close to what we observe in a microgravity test. So quantitatively, uh, low pressure condition can be similarly uh, mimic of the microgravity condition, microgravity flow. So let me give you one another example. I did just a very small scale test. But of course, you were interested at the very large fire scale. What, ha what happens with large fire in a space, no one knows because you can't do any test. So let's apply the scale modeling again, how the plume will be formed in an ex uh, outer space environment, for example, on the Mars. In the Mars, uh, there is one third of the gravity no one actually there, so you can't do any kind of test. But suppose if you're on the Mars, once get the fire, how that grows? Fire plume, or how to spreading out? You have to know before you go how to do that. You can't do the experiment. They do the scale. Model. Okay, using the uh, salt water model is very good to know about the, how the plume goes. I don't need to explaining about the salt water model, but uh, this is actually the one. Okay, so the water comes into the uh, uh, water tank, they invert it upside down. That it looks like a plume is moving to the city like this. Very known about the salt water modeling. This is a fire case. This is salt water case, and uh, uh, although I can't go go over, but uh, 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 these assumptions, this is a scaling uh, load. In the fire case, this is a salt of water. Model. Let's assume the fire case on the Mars, this G vector, the uh, gravity term is one third. G2, salt of water on the, uh, uh, on the Earth, in my lab, this G2 must be unity. But this is the one third how to mimic it's just changing the uh, density of lithium. The density of lithium is actually controlled by the how much the solvent of the salt of the salt water. And according to this calculation, very simple calculation, a 1G simulation simulator is actually uh, caused by 20% of the salt solvent. 
but the one third of the gravity is only 6% of solvent. So to solve it, should be uh, reproduced for the one third of the gravity case. Is it really right or not? Uh, this is actually the test results. The upper side is a 20% of salt water, which is a 1G fire simulator. Uh, looks like uh, you know, 1G fire simulator. And here, Bottom one is 6% of a salt water. So uh, that is, technically speaking, it should reproduce in one third of gravity fire simulator. Whether this is right or not, I don't know because I have no experimental results in on the Mars. So this is the, uh, if, the results, if my scaling low is perfectly right and uh, uh, scale model experiment is perfectly done. This is a crowd number of modeling, so uh, I believe this is might be pretty real, but no one knows. I presented these results on the JAXA, and the JAXA people saying that, well, I doubt it because I don't see any real case. Well, of course, you, you don't, because you have no choice. But this is the uh, kind of power of the scale modeling. This is my uh, Oh, I think that's the ad is if you interested more about the scale modeling, we just launched the uh, new journal under this part. And this international journal is fully devoting on how to find the scaling low, which is a pi number, in a variety of the engineering fields, like a fire, fluid, biostructure, blah, 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 blah. So if you want to take a, if you're interested in it, you just take a look. A special volume of the fire might be underway. The sooner cover the paper will release. Your submission is most local. Thank you very much uh, for your talk. That was really, really interesting. Um, really enjoyed that. I, I think uh, we've got a few questions now to cover. I've got some questions myself, but let's go to some for our readers, uh, from our watchers first. Um, the first question someone wanted to ask, uh, it said, thank you, Professor. Uh, how does the atmospheric composition on other planets affect the fire? I'm not sure you covered this in your research, but if you're in if you do know the answer, that would be really interesting. Could, could you repeat it? Um, one, one person was asking about the atmospheric composition of other planets, so not just the difference in gravity, but whether that has an effect on um, the fire and what effect would that have? No, of course, the uh, environmental effect is pretty much. And uh, uh, for example, on the Mars, let's say, uh, what is the composition of the environment in? Maybe 20% of the oxygen, or maybe 20% oxygen of a low pressure. No one knows. At this moment, uh, most of the fire agency is trying to check out what kind of environment should be in a normal, in a, in, in a space environment, uh, in a space uh, conditions. But if you, of course, if you change the uh, oxygen concentration, the fire might be grow more quickly and they get much more danger. If you lower uh, uh, oxygen concentration, much much safer, but maybe you can't live on that. So uh, always you have to think about that you're, you can live and, uh, and that that condition of fire might be grow or not. But of course, if you have the different composition, yes, fire grows pretty differently. But that is also can be handled by the scale model concept. So uh, I hope uh, you can you can use it. If you're interested, you can, you can do that. Great. Yeah, that sounds very reasonable. Um, yeah, uh, one person also asked, uh, they thanked you for the amazing presentation and uh, the interesting results of Fire Sites and Microgravity. And they're asking whether you're planning any future experiments or similar um, scaling work for smouldering combustion. Um, 
I suspect that might be from one of the Hayes Lab group uh, <laughs> asking that question. Okay. Well, the SpaceX, the small learning in a space experiment is actually the young of the specialties. <laughs> so uh, I'm not the person to answer the question, maybe. But, uh, uh, but you've got some really good experiments, so so it's not something you're you're thinking of moving into just yet. Then of course the uh, 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 you know small learning is also uh, uh, interesting phenomena if you are imposing the microgravity. But uh, uh, small learning is more likely oxygen transport controlling phenomena. So uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yes, in the microgravity, more easy to control the oxygen oxygen supply. So uh, it's more effective. If you're going to the scientific way, once you're doing a microgravity test, and of course the uh, scale modeling concept can be applied. Uh, for example, using a low pressure chamber. Uh, recently, uh, we have already published in the low pressure chamber uh, small learning combustion in the fire technology, and that is very similar to uh, microgravity phenomena, which is if you change the direction or the orientation, the phenomena doesn't change much. So the gravity effect is actually nothing. And uh, we can uh, get the idea or study more about the, how the structure of the small learning and how the spread the small learning rate might be changed. So uh, uh, yes, we can uh, actually apply for uh, the scale modern concept of small learning combustion too. That's actually really interesting. That's really cool. Thank you. Um, uh, Guillermo actually has posted a question as well, uh, which is um, talking about, and this was actually, this is actually a question I was thinking about myself, which is um, that uh, when people talk about scale modeling fire science, uh, they often bring up the problem that radiation doesn't scale in the same way as the flow process, processes. I wonder, uh, and Guillermo wants to know, and I, I'd be really interested, uh, how how do you handle that sort of um, how do you handle the radiation in your scale models and in this kind of scale modeling? Uh, that's that's a good question. That's a very tough question too, because the uh, uh, scaling radiation is very difficult, as you know. So uh, at this moment, I don't actually do. So most likely, my flame is very blue flame. So try to eliminate the uh, radiation case, and if you want to add the radiation you can add externally by controlling the radiation. Yeah. Which means that if you change this, uh, if you do the scale modeling test and the radiation can be scaled or not, it's not. So uh, it, you have to have another way to mimic, to control the radiation in, in the other way. So my way is try to make the blue flame and try to exclude any kind of radiation effect from the flame, then additionally you add some, you know, uh, light or other things to mimic the radiation intensity. That makes I sense. It's the real, really applicable one out. Yeah, it's a, I guess it's an, uns it's a work in progress. It's an unsolved problem at the moment, but that also, sounds reasonable. Also, if your scale is very small, the radiation effect can be, of course, negligible. But if you got a larger one, then the things might be different. So uh, uh, maybe that's kind of my excuse. I'm always working on the small scale. So yeah, I can't imagine getting any uh, large scale experiments on Mars anytime soon. But <laughs> we'll see. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Yushi, for a really good talk. I really enjoyed it, um, and thank you everyone who uh, is listening and came along and asking some really great questions. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. We hope to talk to you again soon, um, and it, we hope to see the rest of you uh, for our audience uh, for our next talk on the 19th of October on informal settlements. So yeah, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we'll you. see you soon. All right. All right. So good night. <laughs> yeah, good night. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good day. Appreciate it.